the whispering graveyard. The night I first heard the screams was like any other. The moon hung low, casting an eerie glow over the town, while the wind whispered through the trees like restless spirits. I walked past the graveyard on my way home, my footsteps echoing in the silence. That's when I heard it, the faintest whisper of agony, carried on the breeze. I paused, my heart pounding in my chest, but then I shook it off as my imagination playing tricks. Just the wind, I muttered to myself, quickening my pace. But as I passed by the cemetery gates, the whispers grew louder, more desperate, as if pleading to be heard. Ignoring the chill creeping up my spine, I kept walking, determined not to give in to the fear clawing at the edges of my mind. But no matter how hard I tried to block it out, the screams persisted, echoing in my ears like a relentless echo. I gritted my teeth, forcing myself to focus on the path ahead, but the voices followed me, haunting every step I took. By the time I reached my house, my nerves were frayed, my senses on edge. I slammed the door shut behind me, leaning against it as if to keep the horrors of the night at bay. But deep down, I knew they would always find a way in, no matter how tightly I sealed myself off from them. As I lay in bed, the screams echoing in my mind, I couldn't shake the feeling that something had changed, that I had stumbled upon a secret too terrible to comprehend. And little did I know, this was only the beginning of a nightmare that would consume me whole. The following night, I tried to convince myself that what I heard was nothing more than a trick of the wind, a figment of my overactive imagination. But deep down, I knew the truth. As I passed by the graveyard once again, the air seemed to grow colder, heavier, as if weighed down by the weight of centuries of suffering. And then, I felt it, a chill creeping up my spine, wrapping around me like a shroud. I shivered, pulling my coat tighter around me, but the cold penetrated to my very core. I quickened my pace, desperate to escape the icy grip. But no matter how fast I walked, the chill followed, clinging to me like a specter. And then, just as I reached the edge of the cemetery, I felt it, the brush of something unseen against my skin, a whisper of breath against my neck. I spun around, heart pounding in my chest, but there was nothing there, just the empty darkness of the night. Trembling, I stumbled backwards, my mind reeling with fear and confusion. How could this be happening? What did they want from me? That night, I dreamt of the graveyard, of shadowy figures lurking among the headstones, their eyes glowing with a malevolent light. I tried to run, but my feet were rooted to the spot, as if held in place by some unseen force. And then, they were upon me, their icy fingers reaching out to claim me as their own. I awoke with a start, drenched in cold sweat, the echoes of their whispers still ringing in my ears. I knew then that I could no longer ignore the truth, I was being hunted, stalked by the restless spirits of the graveyard, and there was nowhere left to hide. With each passing day, the presence of the damned grew stronger, their whispers louder, their icy breaths closer. I could feel their eyes upon me, watching, waiting, as if biding their time until they could make me join them. No longer able to deny the truth, I sought solace in the daylight, avoiding the graveyard at all costs. But even in the safety of my own home, I could not escape their reach. I felt their presence lurking in every shadow, their whispers echoing in every corner. And then, one night as I lay in bed, enveloped in darkness, I felt it, the touch of something cold and clammy against my skin, like the brush of a long-forgotten memory. I froze, too terrified to move, as the whispers grew louder, more insistent, until they filled the room like a cacophony of despair. I tried to scream, to plead for mercy, but no sound escaped my lips. I was trapped, at the mercy of forces beyond my comprehension. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the touch vanished, leaving me alone in the suffocating silence. But the reprieve was short-lived, for as the days passed, the encounters grew more frequent, more intense. I could feel their cold hands reaching out to me from the darkness, their whispers echoing in my mind like a relentless drumbeat. Desperate for salvation, I sought the help of priests and mediums, but none could offer me the peace I so desperately craved. For the damned were relentless in their pursuit, their torment driving me to the brink of madness. And now, as I stand on the precipice of oblivion, I can feel their icy embrace closing in around me, their whispers growing louder with each passing moment. I know that soon, 
I will be lost to them forever, condemned to join their ranks in eternal torment. But even in the face of such horror, I cannot help but wonder, is there still hope for redemption? Or am I doomed to wander the earth for all eternity, a prisoner of the graveyard's dark embrace? Story 2. The Haunting Dreams. The dreams began innocently enough, a flicker of darkness at the edge of my mind, a whisper of something sinister lurking in the shadows. But as the nights passed, the darkness grew stronger, seeping into my thoughts like a poison, until I could no longer tell where reality ended and the nightmare began. It always started the same way, a sense of unease, a feeling of being watched as I wandered through the deserted corridors of my university. But as I ventured deeper into the darkness, the world around me began to warp and twist, its familiar contours melting away to reveal a landscape of nightmares and despair. And then, just when I thought I couldn't take it anymore, I stumbled upon it, a portal to hell, a gateway to the abyss that lurked just beneath the surface of my subconscious. I tried to turn away, to flee from the darkness that threatened to consume me, but it was no use. The portal had me in its grasp, its tendrils wrapping around me like a vice, pulling me deeper into the darkness with each passing moment. I tried to wake myself, to shake free from the nightmare that held me in its grip, but it was no use. The portal had become my prison, a cage of darkness from which there was no escape. The days blurred together as the darkness of my dreams spilled over into my waking life. I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination running wild, that the portal to hell was nothing more than a figment of my tortured mind. But deep down, I knew the truth, the portal was real, and it was growing stronger with each passing day. I could feel its presence lurking in the shadows, a malevolent force that threatened to consume everything in its path. And then, one night, as I lay in bed, paralyzed by fear, it spoke to me, a voice from beyond the veil of reality, a whisper in the darkness that sent a shiver down my spine. Do you see me, mortal, it hissed, its words dripping with malice. I am the darkness that lurks in your soul, the shadow that haunts your dreams. Embrace me, and together we shall rule over this world and the next. I tried to resist its words, to turn away from the darkness that threatened to consume me, but it was no use. The portal had woven its tendrils deep into my mind, twisting my thoughts until I could no longer tell where reality ended and the nightmare began. With each passing day, the darkness grew stronger, its influence spreading like a cancer through the halls of my university. And then, just when I thought I couldn't take it anymore, something changed. The souls of the dead began to rise from the portal, their empty eyes staring out at me with a hunger that sent a chill down my spine. I tried to run, to escape from the nightmare that had become my reality, but it was no use. The portal had unleashed a darkness that could not be contained. The university became a battleground, the souls of the dead swarming through the halls like a plague of locusts, their empty eyes fixed on me with an evil hunger. I tried to fight back, to hold back the tide of darkness that threatened to consume me, but it was no use. The portal had unleashed something which could not be contained. At last, I write this story to anyone who thinks they can beat the dark. There is no victory for us mortals. We will be found sooner or later and the only thing you can do is to pray for forgiveness. The End Subscribe for more. Thank you.